Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. I actually was walking by Night Fury, the black reticulated python's cage, and it was kind of hyper this morning. We're open up later on tonight at the zoo, so uh, we're gonna have to see what's going on with this monkey here because I'm telling you what, he was striking at the glass and stuff like that. Gonna have to make sure that he calms down because uh, we can't have that happening with taking him out, obviously. So let's see what his uh, his little issue is for the day. Don't you bite me, don't you bite me. It's gonna bite me. It's gonna bite you? <laughs> <laughs> don't bite. Come on. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. How do I get him out? Don't do it. Don't, don't. Get. Ah, so scary. Oh gosh. <laughs> I can't get it to stop wanting to bite. So much for the blue ball training. <laughs> stop, come on, Night Fury. I have to give him my shoe now. Stop, 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 stop. You know when you take the shoe out, you know you're gonna go, oh! Okay, so I guess Night Fury's not gonna come out today. Back in your cage, back in your cage, back in your cage. Oh! Woo! What in the world? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh! No! Brian! <laughs> what do we do? We don't have the cage. Get him over here. Ah! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no. This doesn't normally happen, guys. I mean, you know, it's just really fired up to eat. The downside is, is that we're trying to get, uh, you know, the downside is, is we're open for public tonight. We definitely can't have him acting this way because I don't know what is going to happen if we can't break him of this. So I think I'm going to have to just somehow get him out of this, this mode here. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Ugh. I'm going to try to just take him out. Let's see. What happens? Woo. You got a quick dodge though, dude. I don't know, man. This is sketchy. Sketchy as all hell. I've never seen him so crazy that I can't get him out of bite mode, no matter what I do. He's just totally in food mode right now, and he wants to just eat anything that can get and I can't seem to get him to stop. This is very unusual for a snake like this to go through this. Come on, Night Fury. It's okay, baby. It's okay, now we're good. Come on, come on, come on. And basically, I can just tell his tension in his body that he wants to still eat. And it's not an aggressive thing at all. It's just a food mode thing. It just wants to eat. And now it's got my hand. Oh, that was close. That was almost, that was almost dinner time for me. I think if I could get him to, oh, here we go. Okay, now here we go. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay, I think we're okay now. Whew. Yep, I think we're all right now. Whew, look at that. Night Fury's my buddy again. Whew. Tell you what, that was sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, doggy, I tell you what, Night Fury gave me a little run for my money there, and it was just a food thing, right? For whatever reason, I couldn't get Night Fury out of food mode. Normally, just within a few seconds, you can touch it, whatever, it realize, all right, I'm not getting fed, and it will let go, but this time, it just kept going. But as you can see, as soon as it's out of food mode, it's a puppy dog, it's tame as could be. And you know, it just ate like four or five days ago, so I have no idea why it was so hyper today, but you could just tell by the way it was going, it was just ready to get me. And uh, I'll be honest with you guys, it took all those years of experience not to get bit on this one, but nevertheless, I'm not mad at Night Fury because he is an absolutely beautiful animal. And you know, when it comes to Night Fury, you know, it wasn't that he's a mean snake. It's just the fact that he was really food aggressive. And really, snakes bite for two different reasons. One can be food aggression, where they just want to eat, and one is the defensive situation. They're not really aggressive. But recently, someone just asked me about Amazon tree boas and how to tame them out. And the truth is, like Lucky here, whoa, 
definitely isn't going to be a tame animal. And it's not that Lucky is necessarily a mean animal. What it is is very defensive. And there are certain species of snakes that are just a little bit more like that, for sure. I mean, and he is certainly one of them. There's no doubt about it. And that's not to say that no Amazon tree boa can be tame. Because I've seen some tame Amazon tree boas, but most of them are kind of like Lucky here, where they just, whoa, where they're just kind of a little bit cantankerous, if you know what I mean. And again, it's a defensive thing. It's never an aggressive thing. You know, I don't want people to think that snakes are mean because they're really not mean. And like I said, Night Fury was just hungry. What was weird is usually you can break that hunger pretty quickly when he realizes there's not food. This time, he just wouldn't break. I mean, I couldn't get him to stop thinking that I was a meal. But you saw, as soon as I got him out and he realized, all right, this isn't meal, he calmed down tremendously. That is a food aggression. It's not a, whoa, it's not a mean snake. It's not anything like that. What it basically just means is that he wants to eat. Now with Lucky here, different situation. Whoa, it's getting close to my face right now for sure. Come on, buddy. Whew. But as far as taming an animal like this, like I said, it might be a little bit hard to do, but you can do it just through socialization. The more you handle it, the better chance of it taming out. But I've handled Lucky for a lot of years and it's never really gotten over it. It's a defensive snake, but it's also absolutely gorgeous. You know Noah's grown up around reptiles, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I figure we'll do a little segment here about Noah teaching you guys about reptiles. Well, uh, do you think that that's gonna work out if well? I have to teach, I can't do it without khaki. So can without you khaki? this for just one second? Okay. So I guess Noah has to get some khakis on to, to be able to, to, to uh, he needs to channel his inner Steve Irwin. Oh, now right. you're good. Now, now that I got my proper uh, reptile acquired uh, materials, that didn't say, that didn't sound right. Yeah. Now that I got my proper reptile apparel. Apparel. <laughs> yeah. Now that I got my proper reptile attire, um, let me teach you a little bit about my boy Irwin. So he's got a blue tongue, okay? And that's because he eats only blueberries. He eats nothing else. It's a strict raw diet of blueberries, which just taints your tongue just like a Jolly Rancher would. Now, if you look back here, you will see brown stripes. That is not pigment or anything. He just rolled around in poop earlier. That's um, not true either. The little eyes, you may think that those are eyes. They're not. It's just a fake. They're actually blind. It tricks prey into thinking they have more senses than they actually do. This isn't um, going very well, Noah. And then their long arms they use to grab birds out of the sky yeah. when they fly by. Yeah. Uh, just for friends because they just eat blueberries, but they're lonely. And yeah. that's about it. So. so now you know everything you need to know about uh, about blue tongue skinks. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll check back in with Noah and continue your, your vast knowledge of reptiles. And remember, if you want to be a reptile expert, invest in khaki. <laughs> I always get asked how Verde is doing, of course, the little anaconda, and it's doing good. As a matter of fact, you can see her poking her head out right now because she thinks, oh, am I going to get fed? So I'm going to go ahead and feed my little monkey right here. Come on, little monkey. Come on, girl. There you go. Ah, she got it. She grabbed it. She took it back. Look at that animal right there. It's so cool. You know, again, little anacondas are so cute. You know what I mean? To think she's going to get big one day, it's, it's almost hard to believe because she grows so darn slow. But as she's crushing food, she's going to continue to get better. So for those of you guys who have been asking about Verde and how she's doing, she's doing absolutely wonderful. She eats every time we offer her food. She's just growing at a slow pace, but she's continuing to grow. But like I've mentioned before, anacondas, in particular females, did about six foot and then they explode. You saw what happened with Ivy. Within one year, she went from six foot to almost 11 foot. That's gonna be the same thing that happens with Viridate when she eventually hits the six foot. So we are open for the public here at the Rep Carum. Everyone's just kind of strolling in for the first hour. We're actually gonna to try to feed Lucy today, and we're also gonna to try to feed Butterscotch here in just a little bit. But we're gonna let everyone get settled in for a few minutes first. Looks like everyone's getting a little chance to hold, uh, of course, the antenna, the Savannah monitor, and all this stuff. So uh, again, it may seem busy up front, but the actuality is we're only about 35 people, 20% capacity. That way we can social distance and we're all safe and stuff like that. Of course, everyone has to wear masks when we're open, but uh, we're kind of just kind of having a good time getting everyone settled in. Oh, we got a tarantula over here, huh? What do you guys think? All right, good job. Cool. So, it's, uh, so it's gonna be a fun day, a lot of time. I love it when we're open at the Reptarium. All 
right, so we're gonna go ahead with Lucy and see if she's gonna eat tonight. Really not 100% sure if she will, but we're gonna do the best we can. Wish me luck. Again. Lucy, you want, want some food? Want some food? There she goes. She definitely took it. So that went well. Again, sometimes when she's on this side of the cage, she doesn't really want to take stuff, so that's pretty cool. So, looks like everyone had a good time. Hey, I live, guys! Woo! <laughs> so, uh, we'll go ahead and feed Butterscotch here in a little bit. We'll come back and probably feed Lucy another one here a little bit later as well. So, uh, she could use a good meal. All right, so what the deal is here, guys, is that we're going to hope that she's going to come out to here. And she's going to hopefully strike out at me. Once she's done striking out at me, I'm going to toss the rabbit in the air and she should catch it out of the air. In theory, that's how it works. But we'll have to see what happens. She's definitely a very excitable animal. Come on, girl. All right, watch yourself. Hey. Hey, this way. This way. Okay, here we go. Whoa. There she is. All right, there we go. So, so she'll take the loss. Oh, so we, we we all made it, guys. Yeah. Way to go. Way to go. All right, good. All right, good. So everything went well so far. We'll feed Lucy one more time in a little bit. you an idea of how it works here at the Reptarium these days is that we actually allow 20% capacity people in every hour. So every hour we cycle people through, right? Now some people buy more than one hour, but for the most part, we have people come in, they spend an hour, then they go out, the next group comes in, and that happens all night for the five hours we're here. So it's actually really fun. We like it because people really get an opportunity to spend an hour in an intimate type setting with a small amount of people, and with all the workers, they really get to see everything they want, and at the same time, we stay safe, we have social distancing and all the other stuff so uh, it's good so hour one is about done and we're about to start hour two and the second group of people are coming in again they're gonna cycle in we're gonna put bands on them they're gonna have a good time we're gonna feed Lucy one more time she's about ready she just finished up her rabbit so we'll go ahead and give this group an opportunity to see Lucy feed as well and uh, have a lot of fun tonight so guys, I want to introduce you to Landon here. He's my buddy. He comes every single weekend and hangs out with us. He's amazing. He's so into animals. What's your favorite animal here? Um, I would probably say a flaming hot Cheeto. Flaming hot Cheeto. That's a good one there. So, so I love this kid. He's the best. Okay, here goes rabbit number two for Lucy. So she's gonna take about 30 minutes or so to eat. You're more than welcome to circle around and just kind of check on her progress, whatever. And she'll eat that whole thing. And then afterwards, we just need a volunteer like you to go in and clean up, all right? Is that okay? Got Tiger Lily, the Brazilian rainbow boa out here, just kind of having some fun. Uh, everyone's still over watching Lucy eat over there. So that's always an exciting thing. I love to do it. Of course, we got Lindsay has a little Peppa the pig over here, the hog nose snake. Jeffrey's out over here. I tell you what, I love it. I mean, it's definitely a great time. Of course, we got some people down over there for salt over here, so I think we're gonna go ahead and spend some time uh, checking out salt. Oh, looks like Jay's already got her out. Good job, Jay. Oh, where are you coming again? No, no, you're good. Awesome. I'm happy. <laughs> Say hi, Salty. You bring the cake in up front? Yep. All right, there goes Salty.
All right, guys, that's the end of a great night. Thank you all. Subscribe, smash that like button. We'll see you real soon. <laughs> that's right. That's the end of a good night, guys. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Right over here is a playlist. Can you hit a couple of those? For my click-through rate, I really do appreciate it. Up here, could you subscribe to my podcast channel? Over here on this side, please subscribe, because we're almost at 3 million people. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.